Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, my husband is actually going to take the lead on the subject. And it is dun 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 being a workaholic. That was so corny. <laughs> being ooh, workaholic. <laughs> no gasp. <laughs> um, so let's go ahead and start. So, husband, my dear husband, when did you realize? When did you notice? When did you finally say, Oh man, there's something wrong? I am a workaholic. Um can I say this? I think it was back in 2016. Um, this is when my grandfather died. Mm -hmm. um, and then we had to drive from Jacksonville all the way to New York City. Mm -hmm. And I remember while packing up, I was telling myself not to bring the laptop. Um, I was like telling myself repeatedly, leave it home, leave it home, leave it home. Mm -hmm. And when we drove up there for after 15 hours... <laughs> Um, we unpacked at my grandmother's house, and long behold, the laptop was there. So I subconsciously took the laptop with me. Mm. And, um, you know, at that moment, I was like, you know what? You know, I don't want to deal with this grief right now. Let me just go and do some work to distract myself. But it didn't really help. Yeah. You know, I was there on a computer maybe for, what, three or four hours trying to get some work done. And, yeah, I was able to get the work done, but that still didn't hide from the pain that I had to deal with, the grief that I had to go through with me and my family. So it was a temporary distraction, but it was just crazy to think, you know, subconsciously that I still brought the laptop with me after I told myself repeatedly not to do it. Yeah. All right. So um, another instance I remember also was when our daughter was born. Oh. Right. So, yeah, this was um, when I remember we, you were in the hospital and we were getting ready to um you know pick up some things and, and come back home i had to you know i i had to i had to go join this call because it was a project that i was working on and i was trying to figure out the next steps but instead of just holding it off until i got back i was like you know, let, you know what let me just join the call for like five minutes to figure out what's going on because at least i would have an idea on what's going on when i get back so i joined the call while I was in the house, right when we was about to leave, to come back to the hospital to give you, you know, your things. So I was just mm -hmm. like, what the hell? Like, you know, this is a moment where, you know, my daughter was born and here I am, you know, on a phone call at, at work thinking you, about what my next project was. Yeah, it's a good thing you kept that to yourself. Yeah. And you just told me now. Yeah. Because I would have smacked you up in the head. <laughs> Like, wait, yeah. you just went to a meeting while I was in the hospital and I just gave birth to my child, to our child. Yeah. Like, yeah. that that's crazy. Yeah, that's was crazy. Sad, actually, I, I mean, I did. I did. When I did that meeting, I had a lot of regret saying, you know what? It could have waited. You know, the information that was given to me at that time. And it was crazy because I remember, you know, the folks I was on the call with, they were like, yo, why are you here? Yeah. You know, like there was like yeah. one that was fine, like whatever work that so, that you had, it will get done. So you realized in 2016 that when your grandfather passed away, even a little before before that, because your daughter was born 2015. Yeah. But it really hit you in 2016 that you were a workaholic. Yeah. Um, but for some reason, it took you a while to actually work on it and, and mm -hmm. do something about it. Yeah. Um, so when did you actually do something about it? And why did it take you so long? Uh, I think the reason why, first let me just address why it took so long, is because I was chasing after something. Right? It was a point in my career where I wanted to you know, gain more responsibilities within my team. And then also, I was fighting for a promotion. Right? I, you know, our daughter was born. I was trying to put us in a position to, you know, have more income, you know, for the family. And I was just kind of on this hamster wheel trying to, you know, get myself in a better position for all of us. So mm -hmm. I was just so focused and, and driven to try to get to that spot. Um, and and then for when I, when I realized I need to make a change, I want to say it was last year. So early last year, um, you know, I was kind of thinking, you know, this the pandemic kind of sat us down. Mm -hmm. And I was like really thinking, okay, where am I going with all this? And I know, um, 
you know, I wasn't going anywhere. I wasn't going to the right place because physically, you know, I was feeling real stressed out Mm -hmm. and, and I just wasn't responding well mentally after coming home from work. Right. Because as you can see, when I used to come home from work, I just couldn't turn off that switch. Yeah. And I realized that, you know, that would become a problem for all of us. Right. So I started to rethink, you know, what it is that I was doing. And I said, you know what, Wendell, you know, (laughs) something has to change. But you know what was so funny about it? The moment I told myself that, they told us that we all had to stay home. Yeah. Right? They were like, hey, you know, pandemic, nobody leave. Stay in your house. (laughs) (laughs) You know, even when you go out to get groceries, get in and get the hell out and come back home. So it kind of worked out simultaneously, right, where Mm -hmm. I was like, I needed to chill out. But then the pandemic hit and said, "Now nah, you really got to chill out now." Yeah. So I was like, "Wow, this 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 is this is crazy." But it, I was glad that it happened at the same time because I was actually able to be home with you guys, yeah. right, and actually get to spend time with the kids a little bit. Yeah, there was the there was a lot of of changes within those four years. There was a yeah. lot of moving. Uh, yep. Another child was born. Yep. Yep, awesome. uh, finances, you know, like, and then you know, of course, you were still, you know, chasing for that promotion. Um, but I guess the thing is here, you know, you of course felt you were working a lot more. You were Definitely working late. More responsibility. And yeah. because of that, there was a lot of burnout on the weekends. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, I remember that there was a lot of times where I know you wanted to like go to the museum with the kids and all that stuff. But by the time Friday hit, I was done. And what was crazy was Fridays, I tried to consciously make the effort of coming home a little bit earlier because I worked late all the way from Monday through Thursday. Mm -hmm. Right. So I was telling myself, okay, if I work hard Monday through Thursday, I should be good Friday. Right. I should, you know, take my foot off the gas a little bit, get home a little bit earlier and you know, still, you know, even in during those moments, Saturday morning, I wake up, I'm like, damn, like, I don't have energy to do anything. Yeah. And and it sucked because I didn't want to be the party pooper and say, you know what, nobody's going anywhere. So it was positions where I was like, you know what, if you have to take the kids on your own, go ahead. But, you know, I don't want to spoil their fun. Right. So. Okay. Yeah, that was some tough times there, too. So you finally realize 2020, COVID situation, you're home. Yep. You're finally like, you know what? I need to do something about this. I can't continue on this path, especially now that I'm home and I'm realizing just how bad it is. Yep. Um, so what did you start doing? Like, what was the resolution? Like, how did you begin the process of changing things? Um, actually, I, what I started, I know in December... Um, I started to think like, all right, well, health wise, since we're not going out as much, I wasn't as active, always on my feet, you know, because the commute to work um, daily was long. So I was able to get some walking in and those kind of things. Um, so I had to I had to change my exercise routine. So I had to start taking exercising seriously because mm-hmm. I know prior to that, I wasn't working out as much. I remember keeping up with a work, workout routine maybe for two months and then fall off. But I really made the commitment um, to start working out, I want to say around, what, December of last year. Mm -hmm. And what I did was to force myself into working out was to start a 30-day challenge. So I was doing, like, push-ups, sit-ups, and squats, like, for 30 days straight. It was hard, but I wanted to get back into that, you know, that habit of working out again to the point where it didn't feel right if I didn't work out. Okay. So I started doing that, and I also decided to do a Facebook group. Um. And it was called The Workaholic Dad. So if you guys are interested, please check that out. Um, yeah, I mean, I created this private Facebook group and I started posting on some of the things that I, would do, I was doing to kind of get out of that cycle of work, you know, working late till like 10 to 11 o'clock at night. And also explaining some of the things that I was doing to eat more healthier, you know, stay away from sweets. And then I will also bring up random things revolving around work, anything that, I've researched on the internet, such as any type of statistics, um, you know, infographics, those kind of things to kind of bring awareness to the people in my group about, you know, time with the family is way more important, you know, rather than you trying to clock in 10, 11 hours a day. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, 
work will always be there, but your family won't, right? So, um, you know, I was just kind of bringing up all these different, you know, situations to light on what was going on with me, how I'm trying to spend more time with the kids. I was adjusting my time on when I was working out, you know, watching my diet, you know, doing, actually doing things with the kids, like all this stuff I'm actually promoting on that uh, Facebook group right now, so. And you came, became very strict when it came down to the time of working. You, yes. You decided this is when I come in, this is when I get out, and that's it. Yeah, yeah, I was real strict on that too, and I I try to still do it today. I want to say I'm around 85%, which is a hell of a lot better where I was before. Yes, so when I come in at 8, I'm out around 5.30, and I, and I stick to that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so far, you know, I haven't had anybody, you know, pull my coattail on it in terms of the job saying, hey, you know, I need you to stick around for stuff because the time I'm clocking out, everybody probably clocked out before me anyways. So I'm just staying like that extra 30 minutes just to make sure that I'm prepared and ready for the next day. So, yeah. So now it's been, what, like seven, eight months? Yeah. It's about seven, eight months since you began, you know, this sort of new new way, new life of I need to stop doing this and I need to start something new. Yeah. So since you began and where you are now, how do you feel? I feel a lot more in control of, you know, what is going on around me, especially in terms of work. Um, meaning like, okay, if I have these things planned that I need to get done for the day, I'm getting those things done and I'm not staying any later. Um, I feel more, more relaxed a little bit more relaxed, less stressed because I'm not staying at work later worrying about more things, mm-hmm. right? So I'm kind of giving myself that cutoff time to just let those things go um, and just focus with the family. And then also I started noticing, you know, the behavior of, of the kids, right? I mean, they're more excited to see me around. They, they're they happy for when I turn off the laptop and, you know, come into the, the living room to be with them and yeah. yeah, and then I have more time to talk with you, Yeah. right? I mean, I know that there's a lot of times where, you know, I'm working that late and I'm so tired. You don't have enough time to even have a conversation about what happened for the day, right? So we actually have time to talk. <laughs> you know when, like, you're a workaholic dad, when your son takes out his little, like, um, what's it called? It's like a little it's table. Play, play desk. Yeah, it's yeah. like a little play desk where he learns his alphabet and stuff. Yeah. And he uses <laughs> he uses blocks to pretend that he's scrolling with a mouse. That was crazy. And that he's, <laughs> he, that he's picking up a phone call. So I was just like, wow, okay, yeah. That, that, if that's all, how he sees his father all the time, it makes sense that something needs to be changed. Yeah, I need to be doing something different, so... Maybe do some push-ups and maybe you might mimic that. (laughs) Something different. But, yeah, that's crazy that he's catching on. And, um, yeah, I don't want him to see that. You know, it's it's crazy. Like, I I would love to keep work and home life separate, but it's so tough, Mm -hmm. you know, especially working remotely. Um, But, you know, hopefully, you know, that that changes sooner rather than later where I'm able to get back into the office and kind of keep those two things separate where when I'm home, I can just focus on you guys because it's to the point where I'll just like leave the laptop in the office of you know, and just worry about it the next morning when I go in, mm-hmm. you know? So is there, is there anything that you think that you need to really work on at the moment? I mean, of course, like you've, you've done your due diligence in regards to, you know, working less, doing a routine, eating healthy, exercising, all things that are a benefit you know, and are, as you would consider, healthy habits. Yeah. Um, but is there something maybe that you're thinking about that maybe you're like, I need to work on this a little bit more. This is something that I should really pay attention to and I should kind of work on since I ha- I've i I've been doing all these other things for seven months. I think I can add something else on top of it. I think one of the, I actually have two things. One thing is learning how to turn off that switch. Because mm-hmm. even though, yes, I am being strict on when I clock out, it's still hard to turn that switch off. I mean, you, you see it at times when I'm clocking off at work where 
I'm still talking about it. There's a lot of venting. Yeah, a lot of venting. There's a lot of venting and, involved. And a lot of thinking on what next moves I should be doing. You By know? now, I should be hired because yeah, of how much you tell me, I should be hired into the job. Like, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, that's turn off that switch is so hard because, I mean, the desk is right here. Yeah. You know, and it's crazy. It's like okay, I only have 15 steps from the desk to the living room to turn off the switch mentally. Yeah. Of all right, I'm done with work. That's it. That's it's not that simple for me. So, I really got to work on that. And the next thing is, um, I I want to be more creative in terms of the things I do with the kids. Yeah. Right. I mean, yes, I am sitting there with them now. I am available now. There's things I want to do with that time. Right. So, I you know play more games with them. Yeah. Um, in, I think the that's one of the things I want to do is play more games with them because I see how they are. And how engaged they are when I'm there, um, and it's fun to see them, you know, compete a little bit, and you know, it's fun for all of us. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so it's fun. So that's something else that I definitely want to do. So we have all the games available. Probably might get a few more, but we have enough to get started. So mm-hmm. yeah. Now, I know there's some there's a topic that I, I wanted to bring up, and this is coming from you know being your wife and being the wife of someone who's a workaholic. Mm-hmm. Um, the the stress and the tension that comes with the job that you have um can be overwhelming um and because of that it tends to come into you know sort of the home yeah um so that's something that i wanted to speak to you about because i know that me being me and you know how i am in regard to to mental awareness um it it can it can cause a lot of problems in the relationship, you know, not only with, you know, me, your wife, but also with your children. Um, so I think it's something that, you know, maybe you can hit a little bit on how you feel about that, because I know that there have been times I've spoken to you <coughs> in so. regards to, you know, like if you're angry or, you know, like telling the kids, hey, I'm stressed. Like sometimes you have to be truthful with your children, even with, you know, the ages that they are and help them realize that it's not their fault. They haven't caused the problem, but it's just that you're stressed. Yeah. Um, I'm not good at that yet. Yeah. Um, because it's kind of like I'm in this position where when I am working, I tell them to kind of go away. Yeah. Because I don't want them to, you know, feed off of that energy. But I know that might come off as me being mean sometimes. Mm-hmm. But I'm doing it for a reason, right? Because in moments like that, when I'm high stressed, I don't want them to see me, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. And that's why I don't like mixing the, you know, home and work yeah. life so closely like this, right? I'd, I'd rather be, you know, stressed out in the office, handle it, and then when I get home, I'm good. But in this case, they're seeing me at work, you yeah. know, and how I'm handling things like on the fly, you know, when these, you know, crazy moments pop up or, you know, these last minute requests come up when I'm trying to figure out what it is that I need to do. So... Yes, I think you're right. You know, sitting down and explaining, especially to our daughter since she's older, Mm -hmm. you know, what it is that's going on. And I'm glad that you brought that up because I did have a conversation with her about that the other day, Mm -hmm. explaining to her about the stress and that is not on her. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, I kind of like apologizing ahead of time because I know that, you know, this situation will pop up again, but I got to be more mindful on how I respond especially around them. Yeah. So around times like this, you know, I am more aware that, okay, if I am in a stressful moment and I do see the kids, you know, kind of just bust into the room just to get my attention for a few minutes, I know to say, you know what, guys, I please, you know, to just leave instead of rather than getting upset. I try to say, you know, I'll talk to you later or, you know, try to put those things off that they're trying to show me mm-hmm. so that they know I'm not upset at them and that whatever it is can wait. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that those boundaries are still tough to set, but, you know, still working on it. But yeah. I'm just glad that my daughter understands. Yes. She understands now. Yeah. You know, where she's I'm very vocal from. about it. Yes. You know, she she, she came to me and she was like, Daddy, apologize. He said that it's not my fault. And yeah. I was like, that's good. And I was like, I'm glad that he spoke with you and he told you. I was like, you need to understand, you know, like daddy has a tough job and it can be stressful. Yeah. But it's never your fault, you know? Whatever's going on, it's not your fault. And she did state that she felt it was her fault that you were angry. Yeah. But because you spoke to her, she realized that it wasn't. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, which I think was a great thing, you know, yeah, to yeah. do. Um, but yeah, I mean, is there anything that you want to tell the listeners about this, you know, subject about being a workaholic parent uh, or just any, being a workaholic in general? Yeah. For anybody that's so delve into whatever work that they're doing, just make sure you have some time for your family. If, if, it, if you don't have a family, then carve out time for your friends. Mm -hmm. Right. But make sure you carve out time for your personal life, period. Mm -hmm. Right. Whatever it is that you do, take that very seriously and and make sure you own it. Right. If you know that you're not staying in contact with folks around you like how you should, then get back on track. You know, you know, apologize and, and get back on to the, you know, get back on path again and make sure that you stay in contact with folks. Because you know what? Work is always going to be there whether you're there or not. Right. That's never going to change. Yes. But the people that love you. And that are around you from day in and day out. If you don't treat that relationship with care, you, I mean, you're gonna lose it over work. Like, yes. You know the the values don't add up between the work and then you know the personal relationships in your life. So. Mm -hmm. And I think coming from uh, the the spouse, like the aspect of you know me seeing you and yeah. me seeing that you're a workaholic, I guess the best thing you can do, just like any relationship, is just communicate. You right. know, communicate and support. Because I don't believe that someone wants to be a workaholic, but they fall into the trap, you know? Yeah. So it's always good to kind of bring them back and, you know, talk to them about it and, and figure out ways that things can be resolved. Yes. So, yeah, I think this was a great topic. Yeah, this was good. Yeah, it was a great way. edgy, too, because I kind of, like, you know, open it up some old moments <laughs> for, like, a therapy session. Damn. Yeah. yeah. But, guys, uh, thank you for listening. Uh, please comment subscribe, like, um, and we will see you on the next one. All right, peace.